you have shared and what I've heard others refer to is that when you transition, you still have a mind, for lack of a better word, maybe a more expanded mind. We might call it a soul mind. And even, you know, to an extent, like a, a still a kind of personal ego, not yes. not in the not in like the with all the human trappings, but in the sense that you still may feel like a personal self. I've seen and been shown multiple different scenarios, meaning some of them have chosen to stay, you know, like you like you mentioned in their human, you know, soul form. Others have chosen to come back. So, you know, if you want to entertain that idea of, you know, reincarnation or coming back for another life and others have chosen or been told, I guess, to stay there and elevate as part of their life's mission. So out of all of those different scenarios, the one thing that they told me that is true, that, that's true, meaning it remains the same, is that when someone crosses, they really do retain both their ego, as you mentioned, but also their personality. So that as, you know, what makes up your soul in that regard, that never goes away. Yeah, if we are, maybe some of us feel more like just that personal self, but if we are ultimately more of a multiplicity, mm -hmm. like, is it really just a going to spirit and then leaving spirit and coming back? And when we're here, we're not in spirit. Is it is it really like this linear thing or, uh, as how it's been described in this book and some of the information I get is that the soul can almost divide itself a little bit in the sense Correct. that a part of it can stay and come back and still be in spirit and maybe it's it doesn't have as much energy in spirit yes. while it's incarnated but that would sort of make sense to me um, based on the idea that it always seems like if you want to connect with your ancestors or things like they're always there, but what if yes. they were incarnated like in, and they weren't home, so to speak, you know, so yes. it would make yes. sense that maybe they can divide themselves a little bit. Does that a resonate? Absolutely. Divide is a good way to put it. And, they, and they've shown me exactly that, like, you know, that whole, whole saying, well, can you be in two places at the same time or could be in the two, you know, two places at once? The answer is yes, not only two places at once, but they could be multiple, you know, places and moreover multiple dimensions at once so absolutely like you could easily go to a psychic medium and he or she could pull like you mentioned an ancestor or someone you know maybe not so far up the, the family tree you know someone that you've lost they can pull them so to speak and talk to them during the reading yet at the same time that very person could be doing some soul work <laughs> you know right. on earth as a you know a reincarnate so to speak so yeah right Mm -hmm. And because, you know, people float the idea that there are multiple lives being played out at the same time and all so that sort of thing. So there's this, you know, it, it makes sense. It's a little more fluid and there's a multiplicity. Yes. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Be The Vessel podcast. My name is Daniel, and I play the roles of channeler and intuitive psychologist, aiming to bridge all aspects of the healing arts while navigating my return journey to the stars. I interview those journeying through all aspects of healing, whether that be from more traditional Western frames or from a more spiritual or spirit-based connection. What I always find is that everyone is a bridge between worlds, a universe unto themselves, and a unique light that shines brightly for the collective. If you like what you hear and are interested in more of my offerings, consider joining the Be The Vessel community at patreon.com slash Atkins, where you will find various unique offerings bonus content, and podcasts such as my own channeled information and the new Be The Vessel healing series. May you find what you're looking for and remember the light within. And lastly, the views in this episode do not represent my personal views, nor are they to be taken as medical advice or scientific fact. Always do your own research, come to your own conclusions, and trust your own guidance. Kathy Taylor is a fourth-generation medium who has been trained and certified under psychic medium and spiritual teacher Lisa Williams through her International School of Spiritual Development. Kathy has worked with clients internationally and is also trained as a forensics medium, working on unsolved cases mainly involving murders and missing persons. Kathy has experience with remote viewing as well as Akashic Records readings, aka past life readings. 
She has been reading people professionally for over nine years and has done approximately 3,400 readings while continuing to develop and add courses to her own mentorship programs, workshops, and classes. She enjoys identifying those who are intuitive and have the gift, and then providing a safe, soul cluster space in which they can learn, grow, and develop their metaphysical abilities. I first met Kathy at a pivotal point in my own journey when she immediately called forth a dear friend who had passed and provided invaluable guidance about my upcoming move across the country. I have seen firsthand Kathy's astounding gifts which flow through her with great ease and humility. I am so excited to have Kathy back on the podcast today to discuss all things related to the soul's journey. In this episode, we go deep into the spirit realm to discuss what souls are really up to between lives and what the process of soul ascension and mastery may really be about. This was an incredibly fun and special episode to record as we got into some of my own personal Pleiadian mission and the interplanetary lens through which I see things. I am also sharing the video of this episode for the first time, which is available on my YouTube channel. And if you would like to revisit Kathy's first time in the podcast last year, feel free to listen to episode 20. If Kathy's work resonates with you, you may be added to her individual wait list and check out upcoming classes and workshops at her website, hellofromabove.com. Please enjoy this episode with the gifted Kathy Taylor and may it be an invitation, a gift, and a medicine for you to discover and align with your own soul's journey through this life and beyond. Hi, Kathy. Thanks so much for being here, for coming back, and oh uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me again. It's truly, truly an honor to be here and to be chatting with you again. It is. The honor is all mine. It's um, such a pleasure to to chat with someone so gifted like yourself. And um, for those who are interested, um, I did have you on earlier and and uh, we we dug into your journey and all the miraculous steps that led you to where you are today. Um, and so uh, today we're just gonna we're gonna entertain some of my curiosities about the spirit realm. And I'm so grateful that you agreed to come on here and and do this with me because um, you are the perfect person I would want to talk to about about some of these questions. And you know, I think I'm I'm sure the the listeners will benefit because there's a there's a lot of things to discover about the spirit realm. And even if you are even if you have a good amount of conviction that that it exists, you know, there's a lot of different brands of spirituality. There's yes. a lot of different frameworks. A lot of different people say a lot of different things. And yes. um, we kind of are left having to find our own way, trust our own form of evidence, whether that is experiential or, you know, through our work or just through what we discover. And yes. um, there's a lot of things that I've been drawn to that have been very convincing for me outside of my own experience. And and that includes things like uh, people like you, um, also like near-death experiencers and yes. other sort of stories and um, experiences that are, that just provide so much conviction but and, and tell a story. And for me, you know, the story is not necessarily true. It, I think it conveys an experience that a given person had or the way they connected or the structure of their mind and their beliefs um, yeah. and how the information was sort of translated. Yes. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the way it is for everyone. And one of the one of these sources of material that I've been most heavily drawn to has been people who were trained as clinical psychologists or psychiatrists and sort of stumbled into this world through the use of hypnosis or regression techniques, which were not um, sort of inherently spiritual techniques. They were traditionally used just to help people regress into what Freud called the unconscious or early states of childhood. But some of these individuals who, the most notable that, that I refer to being uh, Dr. Brian Weiss and Dr. Michael Newton, who both yeah. wrote books like right around the same period of time, which is very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. they both sort of stumbled into what is now referred to as past life regression. I believe they really created that whole field and, um, their, their books are, are a little different. Like, um, uh, many lives, many masters explores past lives. And then these masters come through between lives and, 
And then Mm -hmm. Michael Newton really focused more on the between lives. That's what was most fascinating to him. And it is, it's very enthralling to explore that further, like the journey of the soul, like, like what Mm -hmm. goes on. And, um, and I just finished reading his book journey of souls. And it just, I just had so many questions, (laughs) you know, and that, you know, have my own intuitive guidance, but it's fun to, to chat about some of these things. So, uh, the first, the, the first question I want to start with is, is just the nature of transition. And what I, what I gather from the book is that, and from my own guidance and from, and from what you have shared and what I've heard others refer to is that when you transition, you still have a mind for lack of a better word, maybe a more expanded mind. We might call it a soul mind. And even, you know, to an extent, like a, a still a kind of personal ego, not not yes. in the not in like the with all the human trappings, but in the sense that you still may feel like a personal self, yes. um, which is very interesting to me because the sources that I've connected with personally have been very sort of high, for lack of a better word, and often feel like a collective and a we. And so yeah. it feels like that exists, too. So yes. my um, question is, is that when souls cross over, maybe they still carry that personal self, but at some point, do they start to merge back with like their other lives? Do they always stay as that one, oh, I was a human in that one life and that's my, um, that's the identity I'll choose? Do they, is there a, a little bit of a merging, a more of a, it, does that happen through just their growth and development or how does, do you have a sense of how that unfolds? Yes. And let me preface my answers today by saying, you know, in no way, shape or form, am I the authority? Um, I mean, I've definitely been shown and I've been told so many different things. And I always, I joke, but it's really, not, it's a joke, but it's not in the sense of, I always tell people, I only get to go so far in terms of seeing these and, you know, experiences and, and gleaning these answers, because if I went all the way, then I would be dead too. So, (laughs) you know, the near death experience people, I actually have a lot of respect for because they have been dead and seen things a lot deeper than, you know, somebody like myself and and, and you even have. Um, The best answer that I can give to that question is, and I'm laughing at my own self. um, It depends on the person. Yeah. I've seen and been shown multiple different scenarios, meaning some of them have chosen to stay, you know, like you, like you mentioned in their human, you know, soul form, others have chosen to come back. So, you know, if you want to entertain that idea of, you know, reincarnation or coming back for another life and others have chosen or been told, I guess, to stay there and elevate as part of their life's mission. So, out of all of those different scenarios, the one thing that they've told me that is true, that that's true, meaning it remains the same is that when someone crosses, they really do retain both their ego, as you mentioned, but also their personality. So that as you know, what makes up your soul in that regard, that never goes away. Interesting. So what do you think of this idea? Because this was floated in the book and it's something that I'd considered as well because it's like if we are, maybe some of us feel more like just that personal self, but if we are ultimately more of a multiplicity, Mm -hmm. like is it really just a going to spirit and then leaving spirit and coming back and when we're here, we're not in spirit? Is Is it really like this linear thing or... Uh, as how it's been described in this book and some of the information I get is that the soul can almost divide itself a little bit in the sense that a part of it can stay and come back and still be in spirit. And maybe it's, it doesn't have as much energy in spirit while it's incarnated, but that would sort of make sense to me um, based on the idea that it always seems like if you want to connect with your ancestors or things like they're always there, but what if they yes. were incarnated like in, and they weren't home, so to speak, you know, so yes. it would make sense yes. that maybe they can divide themselves a little bit. Does that? 
doesn't it? Absolutely. Divide is a good way to put it. And, they, and they've and they shown me exactly that. Like, you know, that whole, whole saying, well, can you be in two places at the same time or could be in the two, you know, two places at once? The answer is yes. Not only two places at once, but they could be in multiple, you know, places and moreover, multiple dimensions at once. Yeah. So absolutely. Like you could easily go to a psychic medium and he or she could pull, like you mentioned, an ancestor or someone, you know, maybe not so far up the, the family tree, you know, someone that you've lost, they can pull them, so to speak, and talk to them during the reading. Yet at the same time, that very person could be doing some soul work, <laughs> you right. know, on earth as a, you know, a reincarnate, so to speak. So, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, people float the idea that there are multiple lives being played out at the same time and also that sort of thing. So there's this, you know, it, it makes sense. It's a little more fluid and there's a multiplicity. Yes. And I'll give um, a personal anecdote, which relates mm -hmm. to our first reading together, which is when, you know, my 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 dear friend Jeff came through. Yeah. And, um, you know, since then, I've I've always been able to connect with him. And, um, and I hear him and I saw him and he was very much his self that oh, I remembered, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but then, you know, as my own journey started to change and maybe as his started to change it, it's very recently he, and this is going to be out there, but he started to shift and he felt more like a multiplicity, the voice that was coming through deepened. And he told me that his real soul name was Jasul <laughs> and Wow. I start and now I always hear him as that. Uh, and it's a stronger, more powerful voice. And it locationally, I feel things locationally. And he's shifted a oh. little bit. Yeah, a little higher above. And, you know, like everything. I don't know. Am I making that up? Uh, who knows? But that was very interesting to me as like potentially a progression of his own free will choosing or just his development. Yes to merge back with maybe that original source identity. Does, does, how does that sound? <laughs> Absolutely. You, you, yes, a, a thousand percent to all of that. Um, and what they've shown me is when you cross part of, you know, what happened to Jeff is there is a soul healing, but more so a soul elevation that takes place with everybody that makes it over there. And the best way I can liken it, it it's like getting your um, associate, associates, bachelor's, master's, PhD of soul healing. You need to do certain things and meet certain metrics, if you will, in order to go to that next level. And some of these things could be as simple as doing good works over there. Some of it could be trying to make peace or apology or good works from that dimension back to the earth dimension. You know, it... It looks different for everybody. But it's interesting that you say that about Jeff, because as soon as you, you had made the motion of above your head and before you even made that motion, I was like, I felt like he was up here on the on the top end of things. Yeah, that actually, you know, really shows how much work he personally has put into his soul healing and his soul journey over there. Yeah. And I'm I'm happy for him. And I what I also sense is that maybe in the beginning, he was very involved in sort of human affairs, earthly affairs, checking in on yes. his mom, checking in on my mom, you know, just like, yes. you know, being involved. <laughs> and that maybe as that progression happens, it's you, you, you start to dwell more just in spirit based affairs. You're less involved in the day to day of how things are unfolding. And maybe that's right. part of the like of the training is like to is to participate a bit and support. And then maybe uh, there's other roles that you start to play. Very much so. And, you know, if you look at it or think about it from the flip side, I often hear from clients, they'll say something like, oh, you know, my loved one's been gone for, you know, only two years or only this or only that. And I really don't feel them around me as much anymore. They're not coming to me. They're not coming to me in my dreams. I'm not getting signs from them. And I so often hear like the question, are they mad at me or mm. are they okay? Cause I don't feel them that same intensity anymore. And I basically try to describe what you just described and said in terms of, it's not necessarily always a bad thing that you're not feeling them in the same way. It's actually a good thing because that shows just that, that they've taken on a different mission, so to speak, and they're doing their own elevation over there. 
Yeah, that always made intuitive sense to me that like, yeah. that why would, you know, would their highest mission be to just stay involved? Of course, it make, can make us feel good, but there may sure. be other res- other missions and responsibilities <laughs> that they're attending to. Correct. Um, and that may be a good segue into the, to another question, which is the idea of the soul advancement process. And in Journey of Souls, there's, you know, like, you know, and Michael Newton was a was a scientist and a and a psychologist. So so he 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 numbered things and he had this, you know, and that's always you kind of take that with a grain of salt. You know, he yeah. had this like sort of one through five system based on like many. I mean, you know, to his credit, it was based on a lot of research with these case studies. I mean, many, many case studies yeah, and different souls coming through as a, a different frequencies and colors and he sort and they made a get they might have given him the number system but he came up with this sort of one through five number system in terms of soul advancement he also made an interesting comment that a lot of the souls he tended to work with that were karmically aligned to come to him were beginner souls and he sort of saw that through what they were struggling with some of the ego challenges and mm-hmm. um but Does that resonate at all that either that one through five system from like beginner soul to advanced soul? Do you have any sense of what um, what the progression takes? Does everyone have the chance to do it? Is it just karmically aligned for some? Um, What do you what do you sense about that process? I like that one to five system, which kind of goes along with what I just said in terms of, you know, your associates to PhD. Right, 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 right. Same kind of same kind of concept, right? Going up the rungs Uh, again, how they've shown it to me. Everybody has the the option to do that. Um, Some people that cross, they've shown it, shown it to me that they don't have a choice. Like you got to work on some stuff. We need to do some elevation. You need to make things right. You don't have a choice in this matter. But for the most part, people seem to, souls seem to have that choice. But I'll be honest with you. I mean, and I don't say this to brag, but I, at this point, I calculated I've done approximately 3,400 readings since I started doing this professionally. Okay. So I just say this to give like, you know, what my, my sample number is. So in all of those readings, and of course, in 3,400 readings, I'm bringing in multiple people. I think, you know, there's never been a reading where I've just brought in through, you know, one person. But anyways, um, in all that sampling of of people that have crossed, not one has ever come forward to say, oh, you know, I was given the option to do some soul healing and elevation. And I said, no. (laughs) Yeah, not for me. Not for me. (laughs) Yeah, like, now I'm good. I'm good. You know, and, and to speak to your point as well that you said just a few moments ago, some of them do choose to stay more connected to the earthly dimension, meaning, you know, they're acutely aware of, okay, mom still needs me around or, you know, humankind still needs me around in that fashion. So some of them, their sole mission is to stay more connected earthly, but others, my gosh, I hate to say the term, the sky's the limit, but like the dimension's the limit for, for others. Yeah. Well, I kind of yeah. have a feeling that the second I get out of here, I'm going to be exploring some other territory. You don't have a choice, Daniel. Yeah. You don't have a choice. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think this is really was my home base. So no. I think I'm good. No, no. <laughs> no. Um, so I wonder if you do you have a sense of like the people that come through to you uh, um, uh, amidst the 3,400? Um, mm-hmm. Do you have a sense of their level? of mastery like is it is it something that even the ones who come through may be only be at a certain level or just the ones you've tended to interact with you have a sense of where they're at in their development generally speaking that's a great question generally speaking i usually get a lot of the beginner to intermediates i would say gosh i mean to use the number I'm going to say maybe 20 have come through or come to me as highly elevated, evolved souls. And and I don't think that, you know, there's any particular reason for that other than time. And of course, as you know, time doesn't exist over there. I mean, here, you know, what we obviously measure it, you know, clock, calendar, all that kind of a thing over there. They've shown it to me that it's every millisecond, it's present moment. It's 
now, 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 now. So if you want to use that, <laughs> con you know, construct of time, it, it simply that's why, you know, so few have come to me in that elevated state. They just simply not enough, quote unquote, time has elapsed. Yeah. Um, do they feel different to you? Do you, does oh, the gosh, energy yeah. feel different? Yes. And I don't even know, how do I even explain it? They just feel to me. <laughs> like, I, I guess I have to liken it to, to a human example, right? We all have yeah. those friends that, you know, they just have their, you know, what together a lot more than others, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you just know, like, okay, they're in a good space or they've, you know, they've done the work. It's kind of like that in the sense of they feel very together soul wise, if that makes any sense. Mm hmm. There's just a different vibration to them. They they are vibrating at a much higher frequency that feels almost a, like compacted energy, if that makes any sense. Well, that's actually interesting. Well, and I'm sure that the, the advice they share is, is maybe reflective of that too, I would guess. Absolutely. It's that kind of advice where you're like, oh my gosh, every hair stands up on end. And like, I've leaned back in my chair more than one time and I've been like, whoa, that was like beyond profound. <laughs> you yeah, know, like, right. Boom. Like okay. really sage level wisdom. Um, Correct. But, and it's interesting you use the word condensed because in Newton's book, he describes almost seeing the, like he would talk about the souls almost having what we might consider to be an aura and energetic field and it would be a certain color and that the advanced souls, it would be like this condensed, deep, deep, blue, violet right. color, just representing yeah. this condensed light or something. Correct. Absolutely. And it's so interesting you mentioned that. And having this conversation with you, the timing, of course, is not coincidental because I just had a highly elevated soul come in in a reading last week. So, you know, 20 out of, you know, my 19. Or, right. You know, he was the 20th out of the 19 I had previous. But that's exactly it. It is such an, it, I mean, it's hard to describe in human words because, you know, you're, you're trying to describe something that you, you kind of, you kind of have to be there kind of a thing in order to, to get it. But absolutely with the violet, I could even also use the word indigo, sometimes even magenta, condensed, compacted light. And along with that comes the most, gosh, intense yet calming at the same time energy force is the best way I can describe it. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, that, that resonates that, that, yeah. that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. Um, so another area I'm curious about is location and place. I'm, I'm not someone who sees that that way a lot when I connect it's more feeling, hearing that kind of, and just kind of knowing sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in Journey of Souls is very descriptive because he was, uh, Newton was like very interested in like, what did it look like? And and that kind of thing. And I've, and I've met a color up, um, another couple people who also see place and, you know, some use kind of more heaven language and things like that. I don't always have a need to describe things in that way. But I am interested in the way that, you know, souls would describe it in his book was like, I mean, they'd be, they'd be like flowing down almost these energetic, like tracks and threads that they like almost, mm -hmm. it, I would almost liken it to um, going through hyperspace, how it's like, how it's portrayed yeah. in like sci-fi movies and stuff. And then they seem to almost end up in like a kind of neighborhood, like a soul neighborhood. And like, it's interesting because different souls based on their like level of advancement would seem to have different um, connotations and feelings about it. Like some of the beginner souls might be a little nervous, almost like almost like they moved into a new neighborhood, like their parents just moved them and they're like, oh, yeah. what's going on here? And every and it seemed to be like there were different soul groupings, almost right. like clicks and you kind of went back to your click your soul family that you learned a lot with you're at the same level of development at and it's all seems to be based on 
learning, like what they do together. Maybe I'm sure they have fun together or whatever, but a lot of what they do together is learn. It's like they go to like a soul library every day. And I just envision them like sitting around the table at the library. And some of them would talk about like, yeah, and we would see the other other ones over there, but we don't talk to them. Almost yeah. like it like it wasn't animosity. It was just like, yeah. oh, no, we don't belong over there kind of thing. Correct. I, before I answer this, I'll just say that, again, how they've shown me the definition of quote unquote heaven, that whole thing about being above and, you know, going through the clouds and all of that is very much Hollywood movie. Yeah. Yeah. And religious kind of, um, you know, ideas. Yes. So the idea of heaven, like where, first of all, where, where is heaven? They right. showed, <laughs> they've shown it to me that heaven is where we are right now. Okay. Yeah. Except the length of your arm, if you were to hold your arm out from the top of your shoulder to the tip of your finger, that length is a dimension. So if you hold out your arm, you know, as I am right now and just moving it around, heaven is that full arm's length dimension away. So that that's where heaven is, if you want to use the term heaven. Um, in terms of the, the clicks, it, 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 that's exactly what they've showed me as well. And it's not in a, you know, I'm better than you, or, you know, we've got the Mean Girls Club over here, you can't sit at our table. It's very much as if you were in grade school. You just simply are not going to be in a class or in a consort with first graders if you're at a ninth grade level. It's it's just divided that way. So yeah, there's a definite separation, de you know, that is dependent on where they are at in their soul journey. Yeah, it's so fascinating. Also, I feel like you're wearing the perfect shirt because the listeners won't be able to see this, but you have like bedazzled like rings, you know, sort of around your arm and it 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 yeah. show it's sort of I see the dimensions like one, yeah. two, three, four, five going up your arm kind of. And, yeah. and I've heard others describe that. That makes more sense that, you know, time and we that like even people under hypnosis describing it are still attempting to use human language like time and space, whereas oh. the reality is likely way more fluid um, yes. and energetic. And the other piece about those groups is that it seems like you stay in the group for as long as you're developing and that at that same pace and grade level. And if you uh, start to ascend or transcend that grade level, you may leave the group. Does that make sense? Correct. Correct. To which, you know, my clients will be like, what does that mean? If they leave the group, they don't get to hang out with their spouse anymore or their child. Or And it, it, it's not like that in the sense of, yes, you get to sort of you know, not age out, but you know, energy out, if you will, of, of your yeah. group. But yet, yeah. Fluid is the best word. You can still be in your little group, yet you can still come back to your people and associate and socialize, if you will, with your people, but still be in another group. For okay. Learning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, it also seems that like, like you said, it's a choice, but at least in the book, a lot of those souls they they really looked up to their guides like their guides were like really on these pedestals which is also interesting because there's a little bit of ego there like sort of worshiping yes. some of your guides but you know they really did look up to these sort of quote unquote authority figures but were always very clear that the hierarchy was not based in power it was not based right. it was it was very loving it was very supportive it was very yes. encouraging. And a lot of it was hands off, actually. Like a lot of the guides would sort of just, they would poke in from time. To, it was like a teacher that kind of let you have your study room, but would come back in and check on you, like just to see how you yes. were making your free will choices. Absolutely. And, you know, you had mentioned before the beginners being nervous. I think it, it, it bears saying that when you cross, you don't do this on your own. You are assigned mentors. You were assigned guides over there who are ahead of you that have gone through this process that can show you the ropes, so to speak, and acclimate you to your new surroundings. You don't have to do this on your own. So that nervousness does exist. I, I have had spirit come through to say like, yeah, I don't know what the heck I was doing when I first like landed <laughs> over here. 
but it, it dissipates quickly because like I said, you are assigned your own team over there, which exactly what you said, they'll sort of, you know, peek in and, and poke in and see what you're doing and where you're at without being that authoritative energy, if that makes sense. Yeah. And it also seems like, you know, a lot of souls want, I mean, maybe, maybe some opt not to, but a lot of souls want to go through that training process to become guides or like it was referenced in yes. the book, like junior guides where you get to be playing around with that you don't have necessarily you're not you're not like overseeing lots of different groups but maybe you have yes. one soul group or one person and you're a, a guide to them exactly like a docent almost yeah yeah mm -hmm. um so then now i'm gonna go a bit further even outside of this world because that's kind of where i live a little bit and my own experience which is hard to make sense of like because a lot of people will say could fit within this framework. Like it would make sense to them. They're like, yeah, I have spirit guides. Some of my guides are my ancestors and my friends, but mm -hmm. my journey has been a little different. My, the guidance that comes to me appears like it was never human. It appears like I am not originally human. And it just, and actually a little bit was touched on in the book in the sense that some souls are a little more interplanetary, shall we say that the soul yeah. almost vibes with, the planet they incarnate on or the dimension they incarnate on. And some have just more interplanetary, multidimensional lives. Some are more earthly based and they just tend to learn a lot of the lessons from earth. And I'm certainly learning a lot of mine here, but, yeah. but for whatever reason, a lot of the guidance, sort of the Pleiadian council and a lot of the things, um, that's what comes through to me. That's a lot of the, you know, other things have come through like ascended masters and things. And I do feel other souls, uh, humans you've crossed over, like ancestors and like my friend Jeff sometimes, but that's not the, that's not the primary. The the primary is like this other otherworldly thing, like um, angels, angelic. So, like, what is that? <laughs> what, what can you say about that? What is that? You are the, in my opinion, the true definition of a star seed. So, you know, to the listeners who don't know what a star seed is, what I'll explain. Uh, star seeds are extremely advanced spiritual built, excuse me, spiritual beings from other planets and realms um, who possess not only spiritual knowledge, but also have that scientific knowledge, okay? That dates back to hundreds of thousands of years. Um, and it seems that the purpose of someone like you as a star seed, which I, I feel like, you know, and listening to your, your broadcasts and your channelings and everything, you, you in fact are doing this. The point of, of having a star seed is they're sent here to help all living beings throughout all the realms and universes. Okay. Now, some star seeds do seek to control certain interplanetary resources for the benefit of their home planet. So if, and you know, disagree if, if I'm wrong, but I feel like with you, that's exactly what you're doing. You're taking that knowledge from that interplanetary resource and you're using it for the benefit of this home planet, not so much necessarily to change the home planet, but to educate the home planet. So I really feel like the people who are followers of yours and listeners of yours, there's some innate desire in there to one day be able to perhaps even travel soul wise to another planet and maybe even reincarnate back here on earth and help. Wow. <laughs> that, this is so interesting. And yeah, there's a lot of things I'll follow. Firstly, thank you. It's very validating. You know, I, yeah. Um, and while, you know, parts of me feel advanced in, in that, in those realms, uh, on earth, I feel like a toddler. So I don't think that always, you know, makes this life all that easy <laughs> and, um, really still feeling around in the dark, um, here, but, but what's also interesting, cause I, there's a few things I've never heard anyone reflect back to me is, um, because I'm guided to do things that 
really sometimes seem like don't like they don't help anybody or like there's not a lot of people around. and at the same time i feel my guidance system like clapping like that was amazing like and i'm like <laughs> what's that no. like i've done just really weird things like i've given but even before people were following me at all or coming to my workshops i once did a workshop for nobody online just because I was told to do it. And at the end, it was like, trust me, there were so many spirits learning from you. <laughs> it's like, cool, but do they, do they pay? Do they, do they use Venmo? Because this is challenging. For I got to talk to myself over here, people. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that it does. I Sometimes I get the sense like what I do here isn't just for 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 Earth people. Um. And it's also, true. yeah. And also what you said about you know, using your sort of quote unquote home planet as a reason that is so much. It feels like I'm here on this like Pleiadian mission or something. You are. And it's so weird to say that but because I don't even really know what that means. I don't deny my humanness. I'm like human in all the ways that everyone else is. But yes. it's but I do hear and feel sometimes like the mission is a little like I a, just don't care a whole lot about a lot of things that other people care yeah. about, although my ego certainly does, but it's not like, I don't know, it doesn't seem like uh, I'm meant to pursue some of those traditional um, right. paths. Uh, you know, my success, abundance, whatever, you know, all has to come through this different kind of integrity where it doesn't even necessarily make sense um, how I'm operating, but it feels aligned with that lineage um right. and the information that i get and the things that i say just feel they they don't always align with traditional moral values on right. earth sometimes they're based more in these ideas of freedom that almost seem to like cross a line and i almost kind of feel like that you know like i'm not sure if i'm a traditionally good person or a traditionally you know because it's like i have like a different set of rules sometimes it feels like that i'm guided to follow i've relaxed yes. a better where i'm still learning how to be a kind and compassionate human being but i don't always i don't know um the service the service feels a little different um the way that i show up so um all of that is is yes, very very validating and just validating. Yeah, the 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 journey because it's um it's it's taken a while, it's still taking time to to figure out what I'm really here to do and how it shows oh, up I, on an earthly level. I can tell you what you're here to do. <laughs> <laughs> Please, in, in 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 short, not to put any pressure on you, um, you are here to participate or maybe facilitate is a better word in the planet's evolution. So it's going to feel weird because of the fact that you are a traveling soul from another planet who incarnated on earth and your mission, I feel like is to not only inspire, but to also heal human beings in as part of that you know, uh, participation in, in the planet's evolution. Now it is possible. I would have to sit with this with you. It is possible that you could also actually be a physical descendant of an alien from another world. I would, I would have to sit with that, um, who traveled to earth literally to be a planetary light worker. So, you know, that, that could also speak to why this kind of feels like, Ooh, this is odd. Um, which I know it sounds out there, but, the fact that you even said and admitted yourself, you know, there's a lot of things I don't subscribe to over here. That's the true definition of not only an old soul, but also a star seed. You have that quiet sense, so to speak, that you've come from beyond the planet and that, you know, you imagine your physical appearance, even probably from prior lives in other worlds. You know, I mean, we could really like really go deep into this. Yeah. Um, and you may even wonder from time to time how you even got here. Yeah. Right? Like, it's like, <laughs> it's like you know. Yeah. So I just want to tell you that how you read to me as the star seed, you, you probably are wondering or even worrying, are you ever going to return? And I just want to tell you today that you will. You will return to 
your, I'll just say, I don't know if I want to say planet, but your, <laughs> your <crown. laughs> so, you know, so if that's of any, you know, reassurance or comfort to you, then, you know, please take that today. Yeah, no, it's so valid. You know, I can't talk about this stuff really with like my family or anyone else. I oh. will be locked up in a ward somewhere. Um, yeah. But I, I actually, yeah, and I get the sense that maybe I have sort of one more life. It's weird, but I've almost gotten this information that I have like one more life to come back here. But that's would be even. And this is, I don't, I don't share this kind of stuff with a lot of people because I say a lot of things that are out there. But this is like. Like I was getting information about the next 2000 years and that in the year 4000 is when we're going to really start. People talk about the 5D, but that's not really what they think. Like to elevate the physical realm that far, that's going to take a while. But I'll come back around the time 4000 and I'll be like, yeah, 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 that will probably be an easier existence for me because yeah. a lot of the ways I'm guided to live and speak to, mm -hmm. it almost appears like a denial of what's happening on our planet right now. And I really find myself having to continue saying, this is not about digging your head in the sand. It's about seeing th uh, the possibility for a different world. So it feels like that's what I'm guided to be on the edge of. And, you know, at times that proves challenging for me because I still have all these very practical material needs that I'm not always doing a great job of meeting. But it's like the guidance is like, no, just keep living in this other way. And it, people will catch up to you. Like, I don't know if that's going to take a thousand years. I don't know if I'll be here, but um, that's what it feels like. And, and, you know, I think what you just described is normal, right? Because of the fact that you were fortunately or unfortunately reincarnated as a human, having a human experience as a star seed, you know, you like anybody else, you, you, you seek belong, you know, belonging, you want alignment, you want, you know, kinship, if you want to call it with, you know, people, family, culture, group, society, you know? So I, I feel like in doing your work, if you're able to get to that point where, you can identify maybe more freely as a star seed. Like, you know, like people will say like, oh, well, you know, I'm a recovering Catholic or I'm a conservative right. Democrat. Everybody wants to put like a label on themselves in that way, which again is not wrong. But I feel like if you and the others that are here on this mission can get to the point to say, hey, I'm a star seed, Palladian to be precise, yeah. you know, it'll help. I, and I, yeah, I, feel like I've been starting to own it a little more. Just Good. at first I came right out of the gate and I disrupted a lot of people's ideas of me, even just using those <laughs> kinds of words. But now I'm like, you know, and I've used the word channeler and stuff, but now sometimes I'll write from the Pleiadian lineage. Like I'll just yes. sort of say it and it does feel more of like coming into my true self, so to speak, which a lot of people use to, to mean different things is part of the part of that ownership and because yeah i've experienced a lot of loneliness always wanted to fit and never did which a lot of people resonate with but even in terms of you know pursuing ideas of romantic partnerships and family and things that my ego very much wants and i think sure. i did contract here to have there's always this other piece that's like yeah those things are great but it's not your highest mission it's actually you're still <laughs> Yeah, fun, but like, don't necessarily think that just having a family and a partner, everything is going to fulfill you in the way that you really need to be fulfilled, which is to sort of stand up, apart, not better or worse, just, no, um, just to different. fully honor. And that's taken yeah. some time to, but, but in my best moments, it's very freeing. It feels very natural. Like if I don't have concerns about needing to fit in with traditional timelines and cultural expectations, like I do actually feel very free when I can just pursue my highest light. But at the same time, it feels like I I, I do want those things. And I did come here to have those experiences. Of course. And, you know, for, you know, without going into too much personal detail, what I know about you, there's usually a profound spiritual awakening where somebody like you that has a soul that originates from a distant star, star system you've already become aware of it and it usually happens unfortunately through a traumatic life event so you know and like i said without going into detail i feel like you no doubt have experienced that as you know part of this i'm going to call it awakening but also an activation process within yourself 
Yeah, well, that's for sure. And I'm pretty I'm pretty open on this podcast. So people will get to hear all parts of me that they don't even necessarily want to hear about. Um, but yeah, you know, and man, I wish we had another hour because this went in a different direction. And now I feel like I'm getting that personal reading that that uh, yeah. I secretly really just wanted. <laughs> um, but um, the other piece I'll just mention is that I've always had a really challenging time with my body. Um, I just tr tremendous sort of health issues in ways that you people wouldn't necessarily expect as they look at me and I, I can look pretty fit, but mm -hmm. tremendous health issues, which has, in addition to the other things that you were alluding to that have sort of spurred on my development that has been, and it almost feels like one of the things I came here to do was like to learn because I, some of the language I hear, it's not exactly very humanizing about the body. I hear language about like, this is a machine that you, you have to cleanse this physical vessel, which is like a weird way to talk about your body. Yeah. But that's sort of the way I hear about it. I've had experiences where, I mean, I don't even want to go into all of the things that I've heard under the influence of plants and things like that. There is a sort of human experiment going on. It's not nefarious, but like, we are here to cleanse the trauma from these physical vessels, these machines, so they can be more divinely guided, spirit-based machines. Um, and so much of the emotionality and the beliefs are the meaning making. There's almost a more scientific way. I feel like that it's, I, sometimes I feel like I have this weirdly um, uh, like Mm, researcher at like alien researcher perspective looking down and being like yes we need to cleanse those vessels so they can be like like looking at like rats in a lab <laughs> like it's very like um unemotional and i'm like that's what and at the same time i'm a hugely emotional person but i'm hearing all this language about just keep going keep cleansing the vessel energetically activating and and that's that's the deal and that's exactly it i mean that's how they, they've shown it to me in terms of that. I mean, I hate to use the word awakening because it sounds so campy, but like activation process is maybe a better yeah. way to say it. You know, you're not only remembering, but you're also being forced in a way to reconnect with not only your past lives, but also your future lives yeah. in other galaxies and planets. And yeah. then from all of this, they still want you to have this deep connection and sense uh, to of the universe and to the universe like oh, okay like no pressure um so for you i feel like you were fast tracked because what's come out of this has been a heightened sense of intuition you you have always read to me like a, an incredibly empathic um person but also kind of to speak toward the scientific side of this you seem to have this insatiable thirst for knowledge about the cosmos and like you want to preach it yeah and like not everybody wants to listen but i assure you the <laughs> ones that, that want no offense but the ones that do <laughs> want to listen you you are making a difference probably more than you'll ever realize in this lifetime to be honest with you wow thank you Thank you. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it does feel like I'm setting the stage for a couple thousand years from now. And I just you have are. to be okay. With, just have to be okay with that. Because some some of the information I hear is that I was around during the times of Atlantis and that actually wow. didn't go so well. There were some technologies being used and developed that I was a part of. And I maybe was was not nearly as developed as a soul and was misusing them and other yes beings and entities were misusing them. But this was like the second coming of that period that we're stepping into now with advancements in technology for rapid healing, for the the recognition of energetics, for the language that I've heard, which was honestly so alien to me, for lack of a better word, which was because I had always studied trauma healing and, and that was a very humanizing way of talking about it. But I was here having guidance around, forget that word, Forget the word, forget trauma healing, even forget the idea of ancestry because time is not linear like that. It's more about an activation process. Souls come in and need to activate the body, the like the crystalline DNA structure of the body. And I was like, that is so weird sounding. It's so scientific compared to a humanizing way of of describing developmental process. But it also kind of made sense. Like that when you're born, there's depending on, and this sort of relates to astrology, depending on the energetics of the planet, there's all this conditioning that you take on yes. and you have to activate outside of it. And because 
human history has been so rife with trauma in early ages, that's mm-hmm. been very difficult. But part of the growth of our species is to sort of shore up the caretaking in early life to allow souls to activate quicker in the body. Absolutely. And, you know, again, you are a true star seed to me in the way of everything you just described. You just said that all with such conviction. And that's one thing that comes from this job. Um, you, you have a very strong sense of duty. Like, you know what, you know what your mission on earth is, and you know that you bring unique gifts, but your gifts are so vast in terms of bringing not only love, but also healing and positive change to humanity and the planet. Like, it's kind of like, you're like, I'm not really sure if I understand all of this, but I'm on board. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much. I, I needed to hear that today. <laughs> That's what I'll say. And maybe we did another uh, show just, you know, specifically on star seeds and missions. Yeah, it's, that sounds it's fascinating fun. To me. Yeah, that sounds fun, honestly. And and you're right. The curiosity, my curiosity, it does. It just go. It's what lights me up. Um, it's what I'm yeah. really called to explore. Um, so we're already like at the end because I, I I need to keep you on time for your busy schedule. But that took a very exciting and validating turn for me. Um, one thing I'll ask you remaining that may relate to, to both things we've been discussing today is one of the fascinating parts about journey of souls was that he got to talk to some advanced souls and see what the training process was actually looking like, because as we talked about, you know, souls can sort of, some are related more to earth and others to other planets. Right. And they wouldn't go into that. It was almost like a barrier. They wouldn't talk as much about other areas outside of Earth. Like their guides were almost limiting them at the time. This was in the early 90s. Okay. But um, but some of the advanced souls that were training, the, what they described is that they would literally not not just like create out of, you know, sort of energetics or spirit, but literally find other parallel planets exactly like earth to go and train on and practice being creators and you know i i use that term a lot like we're all creators but Mm -hmm. the guidance is that it's very literal from the point of that souls will start by like seeing if they can create small simple molecular structures plants maybe a fish and then literally up the totem pole it almost seems like you know there are beings creating worlds, creating universes. Wow. And and it, that's sort of almost, it's the training program is like learning to be a creator. Like that's the PhD is, and in the human form, we get to create lots of things. We get to create very destructive things. We get to create light things. We create things with our voice. We create things in a physical way, which is unique because in spirit, you're not necessarily creating in the physical as much, but- right. But these other souls that are in training, they would literally talk about like, yeah, well, come and I'll practice like making a fish today or something, which which then and they'll talk about because I think Michael Newton would say, well, what about like a human being? They'd be like and they'd almost scoff like, oh, that's way too complex. I'm not there yet. The DNA is right. the double helix. <laughs> it's like fascinating to really hear this description of the creation process rather than just this more neutral universal intelligence sort of unfolding through levels of beings. That makes a lot of sense, actually, because as you were saying this, my brain was going and thinking, okay, there's creation on earth, there's creation on other planets, but then you could take it that step further and go out into the constellations and the stars and start creating there. Like, you know, I mean, as you know, the dimensions can be seemingly endless. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. Palladians are what? They're on the fifth dimension or something like that. So it's like, how far do you want to go with this in a good yeah. way? Yeah. You know? So that's fascinating because it's like, now that makes me think of like, you know, the categories of these souls, like the ones that have crossed that our star seeds are not, or or are not, are something different. I kind of feel like they they each get sort of, you know, pegged into their own little area of what you just said, creation and, you know, expansion and 
development or wherever, you know, where, whatever else you want to call it. I mean, it's the frequencies literally are endless. I feel like. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's wild. And it does personify things a bit, maybe more than we need to yeah. like speaking about, Oh, there's a being that created the sun and a being, but that's kind of what souls describe. And honestly, I, yeah, I get this information and I mind you, I don't really know what it means, but I get information and they say seventh, eighth, ninth densities of light, similar close to the angelic realm and that the Pleiadians are like creating worlds. And like, I don't, I don't really know. I have a sense of what it means going up the totem pole. But um, yeah, I thought that piece about creation was fascinating. Yeah, because it just makes me think of like, there's no limits, right? To like the emotional and spiritual involvement, you know? And then it's like, what are these souls doing with their advanced skills? Like you said, like, are they making fish? Are they maneuvering right. other humans i mean not in terms of like mind control i don't mean it like that but like to what extent are they you know literally rewriting like what are the high level jobs <laughs> yeah like what are we doing here like you know i i hate to say like the the sky's the limit but like when you're talking about expanding consciousness and evolving like now we're getting deep you know what it i seems mean seems like, like yeah it seems like like the the human experiment, if you will, is only one slice of a nice. larger pie that is just expanding outward and outward and outward and creating yeah. more and more and more. And then you have all these components, right? You have the Palladians, you have the, you know, Andromedan strains, you have the indigo slash crystal, crystal slash rainbow children. You've got the, you know, the common light worker. You Like there's all these other different sects that are all working independently yet not yeah yeah i just blew my own mind <laughs> <laughs> it's endlessly fascinating and i that's why i love talking to you because um we get to explore this and yeah. um i feel in in my in my highest and best i feel like an explorer and it's really exciting um and then i have to come down and and work with my ego and and do all that healing stuff um right. that i talk about all the time but uh, but these are the <laughs> these are the these are the fun times to to explore Absolutely. and continue looking outward um so we are we are about at the end of this hour but thank you so much kathy this is, is always such an exciting pleasure to talk to you both personally um and to to share this this new information with whoever is meant to receive it Whoever's meant to receive it, always an honor and a pleasure. I have so much fun, you know, going off onto different tangents with you. So thank you so much for having me again. Wonderful. And I'll, I'll look forward to the next time. Absolutely. Thanks for listening. If you liked the episode and would like to support the podcast, please subscribe and leave a review anywhere you listen. And if you'd like to connect further, feel free to reach out on Instagram, my website, or my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Dr. Daniel Atkins, where for $5 a month, you can gain access to all sorts of exclusive benefits and offerings for the Be The Vessel community. This includes live channeled events, a new healing series podcast, and more. Until then, may you be the light, the frequency, and the vessel for your highest vision.